No, you're allowed to munch, you're just not allowed to sing. Okay, so this is uh, question eight out of the paper two. I know we've got a beautiful, oh, that is such a thing of beauty, ATP synthetase. I love it, what a protein. And you know, I'm not a chemist, but I can still get excited about that. So I know, that, I know looking at it, this is ATP synthetase, results in the synthesis of ATP from ADP and an organic phosphate. They've even told me the reaction. So, state the position of this complex within a mitochondrion. Well, whoop do this is a phospholipid bilayer. So again, we're talking about Christy. And here we go again. Describe how the proton gradient... Describe how it makes a proton gradient. How describe how this membrane is going to make things in this membrane make lots of protein protons up here in the intermembrane, and how you get a low concentration down here in the matrix. So this says, you know, what's happened before that to make that happen. So what do we know? Electron transport chain, power it off, AO1. NADH and FADH deliver um, hydrogen atoms to the Christy. That's just what they do, they just carry it about. Uh, hydrogen atoms split, dissociate not break down, split into protons and high energy electrons. So, um, electron energy I could write and talk at the same time, I'll be laughing, is used to pump protons into the intermembrane space. from the matrix. And you could say, I suppose, that it's in, you know, that membrane is impermeable to ions and that's why you need to pump them across. Not sure I would have thought of that. Describe. So again, AO1, describe the role of oxygen in the electron transport chain. So what do we know about oxygen? We describe it as so oxygen is the final electron acceptor. It joins to protons and electrons. Water. And I suppose again, if you really wanted to, you could talk about it removing hydrogens, uh, maintains the proton gradient. So removal of protons maintains the proton gradient. ATP synthesis. Phew! And here we get an explain. Explain how ATP production continues in anaerobic conditions. So I'm just going to do a quick... So we've got uh, glucose 
hexos, phosphate, triose, uh, pyruvate, and humans, so we're talking lactate. Um, but we're explaining ATP production, so I don't need to refer to the ATP there. I'm really going to concentrate on this bit, aren't I, where I'm going to make um, my reduced NAD and ATP. And, of course, I'm doing four there and I'm using two there. So I'm going to need to talk about net gain. Right, let's tell that story then. So, um, in glycolysis, The reaction from triose phosphate to pyruvate generates four ATP per molecule of glucose. You hear that munching? That's not Mr. Garner. Mr. Garner promised not to munch. That's Dr. Savile. <laughs> it's like sharing an it's office so with a rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, where was I? In glycolysis, reaction from triose phosphate to pyruvate generates 4 ATP per molecule of glucose. 2 ATP are used to activate more requests for Dr. Schofield to activate glucose at the start. So the net gain of ATP is 2 ATP in anaerobic conditions. Um, this ATP is made by substrate level phosphorylation. So this is as opposed to being in an electron transport chain using oxygen. Notice that I didn't need to do the beginning bit and I didn't need to do the end bit. If you did that, great, you've learnt it, lovely, but not actually necessary to answer that particular question about ATP production in anaerobic respiration.